Peace, family. I would like to answer a question that was posed to me, and the question is, should black women participate in feminism? Now, what is feminism? Feminism, from my understanding, is a, a movement that was started back in the 1900s in order for women to receive equality, the same type of equality and rights that men have. Now, when you look at the history um, from the 1900s and you look at the suffrage movement and when the women wanted to have uh, voting rights, um, and that's a form of feminism, you had the main uh, feminist leaders who were actually not just feminists, but they were racist at the same time. Elizabeth Stanton, you know, she um, was one of the main leaders of the suffrage movement, but she discriminated against uh, black men. She didn't think that black men should have the right to be at the polls and have the right to vote. We also have uh, Frances Willard, who was also a suffragist, and she believed that black men uh, were actual rapists. The whole collective body of black men were rapists, and she was against preventing lynching in the South. So when you look at the initial history of the suffrage and the feminist movement, it had nothing to do with the equality of black women or the equality of people, period. It was just because the white women wanted to get out of the house. Now, when you further look at the history of the feminist movement and when they were marching on Washington, D.C., you had the black women who had to walk to the back and march in the back. And the black women didn't want to have anything to do with that. Neither did the brown women want to have anything to do with that. So when you look at the face of the feminist movement, what do you see? You see a middle class, really white woman who is the face of this feminist movement. You don't see um, the minorities or the black women or the brown women who are at the forefront. When you look at the history again, Gloria Steinem, who has been uh, known or is a CIA agent. And she infiltrated the feminist movement and became the face of the feminist movement. And she actually used the black woman in order to do to be divisive and do what you call divide and conquer. So she used a woman by the name of Michelle Wallace, who came up with this story. And actually, Gloria Steinem was the one who goes uh, wrote the story, these stories in her magazine, Gloria Steinem's magazine, Miss. And what she actually did was she would say dumb stuff like, you know, uh, Sojourner Truth was ugly. And she was real divisive when it came to the black men. And so what she did was she started this whole movement. And, and if you trace the history of it, of black m women ridiculing, belittling, and uh, just turning their backs completely on the black man. And this was due to the infiltration of Gloria Steinem, uh, a CIA agent. So again, here you have the feminist movement had nothing to do with black women's involvement. We deal, we're dealing with the marginalization. We're dealing with the discrimination of black women that the feminist movement never really stood up for. Now, you know, the uh, Gloria Steinem, it was her intent because this is how the government used her was to cause dissension among certain movements. She started um, when she was uh, in college and actually high school. They recruited her in high school and she would go on these campuses and she would cause all kind of dissension to these uh free speech, uh, constitutional type of individuals who wanted to fight for freedom, justice, and equality. And she tied herself to the black feminist movement, but in the most derogatory and negative way that has ill affected to this day, black women and black men. Now, because of the feminist movement and because what was happening um, with the feminist movement and the non-inclusion of black women, you had women like Alice Walker who decided that she was going to create her own black feminist movement and she didn't call it a feminist movement. She called herself the, a womanist. And then you had the Latinos who felt uh, excluded from this feminist movement as well and they called themselves the mujeritas. Um, so, you know, the blacks and the browns, they saw that the feminist movement was not being inclusive. Why? Because it didn't deal with our issues. You know, our issues wasn't that we couldn't go out in the workplace and, and be counted in the workforce. Why? Because as soon as we walked off the plantation, the cotton fields, what did we do? We walked right into the white woman's household and we had to leave our own children behind in order to support our family. And so they wanted to, the white women wanted to go out into the workforce and be counted equal to the to the men to their men they fought against the patriarch system and this is not the black woman's issue in fact not only were we working out of the home we were working in the white woman's home taking care of her children taking care and feeding and cooking her children and her family so in essence the white women were complaining about 
the fact that they needed to um, be out of the home and not just be homemakers. But in essence, the black women came in and took over the place of the white woman in her own home. So, again, we don't have the inclusion of the black woman in the feminist movement. You look on TV, you know, when we were dealing with the um, was it Miley Cyrus and the Nicki Minaj and they had some issues, but they wanted to whitewash the issue and kind of uplift uh, Miley Cyrus and her um, her disregard to Nicki Minaj when she made a statement about not enough black people or black women were involved in the vi uh, American Music uh, Awards. So even to this day, we're still having issues with the exclusion of black women um, in the feminist movement. Now, we talk about a patriarch system. The patriarch system, the black woman does not have any issue with. Why? Because the patriarch system, in essence, has not kept her down or kept her man down. She's not a fighting against that because she's dealing with a society and a system that has been set up to discriminate her, to marginalize her, to disenfranchise her. We're talking about a whole entire system. And so if the feminist movement want to include the black women, then you have to start disregarding her as a not only as a woman, but her issues as a black woman. And what the feminist movement has done up until this day has has literally just whitewashed the black woman in the whole movement. The feminist movement is typically for the middle class, educated white woman. Now, let's look at some statistics. And you tell me if the feminist movement is addressing these statistics. And if not, then they need to pay attention to this. Now, black women make up more than 50% of all women's stop. And this came out of New York, uh, the New York studies. And they said that 53 percent of all women stopped by New York police in 2013. Um, and the city represents 27 percent of the black residents in that in that city, the population. Now, black women face an outsized dual threat of sexual and police violence, according to the U.S. Department of Justice. We look at the case of Daniel uh, Hoseclaw or, or Devil Hoseclaw, you know, and how that case was handled and how he systematically preyed on these black women because he felt that, you know what, the government was going to back him. And there's a recent case um, where a district attorney did not charge appropriately uh, a police officer who raped a black woman because she never said the word no. So here we have policies and laws that are not applied equally among black women, but the white women are the benefits of these laws. Black women are criminalized early. For example, in a New York City, black girls make up 28% of the student population um, during the 2002, uh, 2011-2012 school year. But 90 percent of all the girls that were expelled from the school, guess who they were? They were the black girls. So where's the feminist movement on this? Black women are highly likely to be killed by an intimate partner. In fact, intimate partner homicides is one of the leading causes of death for black women ages 15 to 35. Where is the feminist movement on this? Black women only earn an average of 64 percent of what white men earn from the same sort of work. And uh, according to the National Partnership for Women's and Family, women overall earn roughly 78 percent. So although the white woman may earn 78 percent of the dollar from what the white man earns, the black woman earns much less and a Latino woman earns even much less than what the black and the white women earn as well. So where is the feminist movement on this? Black women constitute 63 percent of all women diagnosed with HIV in the United States. Where is the feminist movement on this? We haven't heard anything from the feminist movement on this. Black women are the fastest growing segment of the juvenile population in the youth detention centers. I don't hear any of the feminist uh, leaders crying out for our children. We have a, a prison to pipeline population coming straight out of the schools when we're dealing with our girls. So, you know, black women are disproportionately represented when we're dealing with rates of murder, um, for example, in the transgender community. Where is the feminist movement on this? So when you look at the statistics and you look at the issues that black women deal with, the feminist movement at no point in time ever really cons uh, considered the issues that black women face on a daily basis.
Now, if the feminist movement was true, in fact, and what their desire is, is for equality between the, the sexes, um, they have to also look at um, the gen, not only gender, but they also have to look at the race. You can't have one and have and ignore the other. We don't live in a race neutral society. We know that race plays a significant role in our society. And to ignore that is to ignore the black woman and her issues that she has. So. Um, I would suggest that black women not connect themselves with a feminist movement that historically never included them, historically always wanted to make sure that their man was put down and they used the face of the black woman, you know, and we're dealing with a patriarch system that was never built for us um, to thrive and, and to be fruitful. So, you know, the best thing that I can say in this aspect to not to join the feminist movement, but more so to do for ourselves, because if we do for ourselves, then we'll be able to deal with some of these consequences that we are dealing with in our community. And then, you know, not ignore the issue that race is important, that we must talk about race. We must pull these blinders off of the eyes of rest of society to believe that race is not a factor in what we're doing. We're not asking for handouts. We want you to recognize that the black woman is uh, disproportionately marginalized, disenfranchised, and discriminated against. And as I always say, when we teach a man, we teach an individual. But when you teach a woman, you teach a whole civilization. And the black woman is the mother of civilization. So thank you for your time. And if you have any more questions that you would like for me to answer or to research on your behalf, put it in the comments and I will be glad to address them. Thank you again.